Alright YouTube, before we get started, allow me to tell you a little story. Imagine a tiny diddles, most likely no more older than six. I had just gotten to my cousin's house and I was getting my tiny goblin fingers all over their giant tote full of Game Boy games. That's when I saw it for the very first time. Sonic Advance 3. I asked my cousin if I could use his DS to play it. He said yes, and I instantly fell in love. I considered myself a Sonic fan from that day forward. It wasn't until a couple weeks later that I would officially get my first Sonic game. I begged and begged my mom and she finally caved and bought me Sonic Advance 2. Sure, it wasn't the game that I had played at my cousin's house, but I could have cared less. It was fun, it was mine, and it was Sonic. The next couple of games to join my roster were loved just as much. Sonic Battle, the Sonic Pinball Party and Sonic Advance Combo Pack, and finally, Sonic Advance 3 to complete the trilogy. I believe that nothing could be better than those games. So just imagine my surprise when a year later, on Valentine's Day no less, when I was walking through Publix and saw this. A Sonic the Hedgehog comic book? There's no way that this could be real! But after flipping through the pages, I could verify that this was no illusion. Never in my life did I think that anything this amazing could exist. But then that's when it really hit me. The realization of the century. I could make a living doing art. Not only that, but I could make a living drawing the thing I loved the most. Sonic the Hedgehog. That's the day that I decided I was going to become an artist and work on the Archie Sonic comic series. But the story doesn't stop here, oh no. It was Christmas of 2005 when I got my next Sonic game, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle for the GameCube. But then I noticed another game placed under the tree. But wait, this isn't a game. It was the first two episodes of Sonic X. Wait a minute, there's a Sonic cartoon! I couldn't believe it. I watched those two episodes on repeat so many times. I was absolutely in love. I researched Sonic X to no end, and that's when I discovered something that blew my little seven-year-old mind. Cartoons aren't real life. They're made by people. That's when I had my biggest epiphany yet. If I can make a living making Sonic comics, who's to say I couldn't make a living making Sonic cartoons? That's when I decided that my new goal in life was to learn the tricks and trades of animation so I could one day put Sonic back on television. Well, not only did Cartoon Network beat me to the punch with the amazing show Sonic Boom. No, I'm serious, go watch it. It's absolutely hilarious. It's the best show they have on the air right now. Sure, my reasons for wanting to become an animator changed later down the road, but that's a topic for another video entirely. Right now, we're talking about Sonic and his influence on my life. Sonic played such a large role in me developing not only my art style, for my ideals of what is to be considered good and fun. That's why I am extremely disappointed that the Sonic series has been letting me down these past couple of years. And Sonic Forces is absolutely no exception. Diddly do, my diddlers and diddlets. I hope your day is going well. My name is Diddles, and I would like to welcome you to Sonic Forces, the official review. Together we can show the world what we can do. You are the Sonic Forces was released worldwide on November 16th, 2017. This game had been in development since 2013, so you better believe that the hype for this game was real. I know I was excited. I pre-ordered this game the day pre-orders were announced, and I'll tell you what, back then, those felt like the hardest three months of my life. And let me tell you something now. I wish I could go back to those three months when I didn't have the game. The anticipation of getting the game gave me at least 10 times as much pleasure as the actual game did. But before I get too negative, let's actually go over the game. I say the game a lot in this script. Whatever. No one's gonna watch it. It doesn't matter. 
The story goes as such. After getting his hands on the Phantom Ruby, Eggman gifts it to an unnamed Jackal who was originally a mercenary on the Jackal Squad. He dons the name Infinite and becomes one of Eggman's greatest weapons. Now, before going forward with the synopsis, I'd like to point out how people seem to find discourse with the fact that Eggman refers to Infinite as a weapon. I never really saw that as a problem since I always imagined Eggman as the type of person to see everyone else as stepping stones to his perfect egg utopia. So, it makes sense that he would refer to Infinite as a weapon, in my eyes. Anyway, Eggman proceeds to conquer 99% of the world with the help of Infinite and his army of clones created by the Phantom Ruby. The clones of Shadow, Chaos, Zavok, and Metal Sonic proceed to body Sonic and Eggman is free to do as he pleases. After months of being tortured, Sonic learns to smile and hide his pains until he escapes with the help of the new character, Boom Sonic, your customizable avatar. And together, Sonic and the Freedom Fighter, Sonic and your LC must work together to defeat Eggman and bring peace to the world. Oh yeah, and classic Sonic is there because... reasons. If it seemed like I skipped a lot of the story, prepare to be surprised. The only thing I really skipped over are a couple of boss fights and Classic Sonic's involvement in the game. I really can't be bothered to go into the nitty gritty of the story since I'd have to detail the events of Sonic Mania and the comics that were released ahead of the game to fill in the plot holes that should have been filled in by the game. Anyway, long story short, the story, if you know all the details, is decent. But if all you have to go off of is what the game gives you, then it's very lackluster. The game offers three gameplay styles, Modern Sonic, Slow Modern Sonic, Boom Sonic, The Avatar, and Classic Sonic from Generations, except worse. And that's saying a lot since I already don't like Sonic Generations. <laughs> Modern Sonic is basic as shit. You run in 3D sections for 15% of his levels, then spend the rest of the level in 2D. You know, 3D Sonic stuff. Many of his abilities return, such as boosting, homing attacks, and sliding. Aha! To get through tight spaces, press the circle button to slide! What? What do you mean, where's the light speed dash? That was never a thing. And they've replaced that boring spin dash with the brand new and innovative quick time events. Also, good luck turning left and right while boosting. Once Modern Sonic gets put on a track, there's no turning back. Seriously, even a bad game like Generations was able to get this right. <laughs> anyway, his levels are extremely short and don't overstay their welcome, which is fine by me. Next, we have Boom Sonic. Next, we have the Avatar. There's literally almost no difference between these stages and Modern Sonics. The only differences are that the Avatar is slower and he uses a Damn. gun. Actually, in the game, they're referred to as Wispons, which are weapons based off of the Wisp powers from Colors. You know, all cards on the table, I've never played Sonic Colors. <laughs> but by this point, I probably don't even need to. <laughs> you can choose from seven different species. Bear, bird, cat, dog, hedgehog, rabbit, or wolf. Each give you different sub-abilities that don't matter in the long run, so I won't be listing them. There's not a lot of customization when it comes to body types, but the clothing options are pretty good. Is it worth beating the game to get all the clothes, though? No. No, it's not. But you know what? I did it anyway. Every challenge, every S rank, I did everything just so I could dress up Sketch and his goddamn friends. Yep, Sketch, Stretch, Daishan, Snowball, Dusk, Taylor, Barry, Norman, Santa, and Petunia. I did it all for them. I am a sad, sad little man. So then we have tag team stages. <laughs> I fucking wish. No, just take the worst part of the modern Sonic stages, mix it in with the worst of the Avatar stages, and there you go. Also, don't forget to throw in a QTE with no negative repercussions, and voila! A mediocre stage. Now last, and definitely least, Classic Sonic. Just take Classic Sonic from Generations, make him ten times worse, give him the drop dash to tie this game to Mania, TAKE OUT THE GODDAMN BOOST WE SAW HIM USE IN THE FUCKING TRAILER! And you have Classic Sonic and Forces. There is literally nothing else I can think of to talk about. His levels are trash, his momentum is non-existent. Keep the building it's in. There's a lot of ground to cover, so just finding it will be a chore. 
Yeah, they fucking get it. God, God damn it. You can't make a single video without pointing that out. And frankly, I'm sick of seeing them in 3D games. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still love them. Mania is still my second favorite game of 2017. I'm just tired of Sega shoving them in games because of nostalgia. If I was feeling nostalgic, I'd just play fucking Sonic 1! I'm done with this section. Can, can we just move on, please? Sega, where do I begin? Sonic Forces is an absolute mess. Personally, I feel as if the only place this game exceeded was the music, but that's not saying much either, since Sonic music is always good. And I could sit here all day and complain about all the green hill and chemical plant stages in the game, or how mostly all of the bosses are reused, and if not from other games, from literally five stages ago. But I won't, because I have better things to do, like killing myself for 100%ing this game. So, what are my final thoughts? It's okay. Yeah, that's right. You just sat through minutes of me complaining, so you could hear me say that it's okay. Well, to be completely honest, it would have gotten a lower rating of meh if it didn't have Eggman's greatest contingency plan to date. It's over, Egghead! We've trashed your mechs, stopped your clones, and put an end to your evil scheme. You might as well give up now! Oh! Ho 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 ho! Not so fast, you speedy little prick! I've got one more trick up my sleeve! Oh yeah? And what would that be, Foldy McNose Hair? Oh, I don't know. How about the fucking side? Wait, that's not funny. That's not funny at all. Whoever said this was a joke? If I can't win, no one can. However, the rating of It's Okay isn't good either. Sonic games have recently settled for scores of It's Okay when they should be striving for bigger and better things. And things only get worse when you realize that this game came right after Sonic Mania, proving that Sonic can still go above and beyond. And even though I still have some complaints about Mania, I can still admit that it was a phenomenal game. And do you know why? Because Sega realized half of the formula that they need to bring Sonic back to his glory days. Trying different things. Sega trying different things is what ended up making Sonic what he is today. They tried taking a different route in moving Sonic to 3D, which resulted in the critically acclaimed Sonic Adventure series. They tried implementing new playstyles that changed up how you completed a game, which resulted in the wonderful cast of characters. They tried to come up with a new way of making Sonic faster, resulting in the boost mechanic. They tried something different by hiring fans to make a game, and that resulted in Sonic Mania. Sega used to take chances, and for the most part, it worked out. However, they ran into one bad string of games and they decided to play it safe. It seemed like they were ready to try different things with games like Sonic Lost World and Sonic Boom, but it seemed like those were the last two nails in the coffin that made Sega think that the only way to succeed was to play it safe, which is why we've seen almost no experimentation these past couple of years. All I can say is that I hope Sega can break out of this funk soon, because I still have faith in them. And even if they never experiment again, I'll still stick by them anyway, because Sonic played a big part in helping me discover what I was meant to do with my life. So no matter where the blue blur goes from here, I'll be behind them every step of the way. Also, I'm still waiting for my Boom Sonic mod for forces. You barely have to change anything on the Avatar model. All the assets are there. The inner beam, the slower speeds, the clothes, even that weird Boom design where the mouth is in like the center of the muzzle. Come on, Ultimate Dark Man. Stop making dick mods and get the word. Hey guys, I want to thank you all for sticking with me this year so far. I know Doki Doki has been going well. Um, we've been doing a full playthrough of Supersonic Warriors on Black Star Plays. Don't forget to check that out. I'd like to thank Gintendo for providing his voice for this video. He makes amazing content on the channel, him and his associates. Please go and check him out whenever you get the chance. Um, I have nothing else to say in this outro. Uh, bye. Music.